welcome back to the channel. So as you guys can see, we are on the move. We are in Caitlin and we have the trailer behind us. So we are actually going to look at another truck. Now, this is not a Cummins truck. Um, so I'll leave kind of the mystery there. So if we get it or whatever, I don't know how it's gonna go. Um, the guy, I think, thinks it's something special when as far as I'm concerned, it's not. Um, but it's certainly a cool little thing that would be a great little summer runaround, if you will. And not necessarily a project, but just a fun little vehicle to have. So, like I said, we are in Caitlin, and Caitlin has some fresh glass. As you guys can see, um, the windshield is brand new. We actually had a big crack here in the windshield going over for about the last six months. Um, actually, maybe even more than that. Um, so, we had Barry... Uh, at Auto Glass Unlimited, put a new windshield in here the other day. Uh, basically, he just came to the house while I was at work, did everything, uh, left me the bill so we could pay him, and that was it. So I'm um, very happy with everything. Um, if the only real difference you can tell that this is not a factory windshield is there's no ram's head up top of the rearview mirror. Um, other than that, it's just like normal, just a piece of glass. If you guys remember the uh, race truck glass the aftermarket piece in there we actually had like a the blue or green tint down here like all cars used to have um, I didn't want that and we got exactly what we wanted so big shout out to him um, he's located in like the Chad's Ford area so I'll put his uh, his number or his email or something down below um, so you guys if you're in the you know Chad's Ford area if you will I live near Lancaster and he came out that way I don't know how far he really goes but he was able to get this thing uh, taken care of for us in pretty much no time so uh, anyway we're gonna get to going and looking at this truck and maybe we'll be coming home with a new little toy one eternity later well guys uh, you can see behind me no truck in tow so I have a real problem with people who list stuff and talk to you on the phone they don't tell you on the up and up so like when we sold the 2011 the the fourth gen that we put a transmission in, i told that guy everything by the time he left he knew everything about that truck that i knew everything about the transmission the quirks i was completely honest with him. so this truck we went to look at i'll describe that first and then i'll tell you what went down um so the truck is a 1996 standard cab short bed, two-wheel drive, uh, Dodge Ram 1500, Indy 500 pace edition. stripes some of them had the uh, Indian Indianapolis 500 um, wording on it you know, saying that it was like a pace truck and whatnot you know just really kind of neat and cool um, they didn't make many of them I think 2500 or something like that and that eventually spawned the SST sport trucks that they had in 97 and 98 um, all you know color matching bumpers all that um, I think they had, they were a little peppier than the standard truck. Uh, they had like an additional, whole additional like 15 horsepower. Um, yeah, not much, but you're talking 96. And those Magnum motors, I have one. They're, I don't know, they were adequate enough for their time, but nothing special. So, cool looking truck. I thought for, you know, for not much money, I could have a neat little play thing. Um, that we could run around and just enjoy and do some dumb shit Western with. Westchester. Oh. We got a turn coming up. All right, so we're off the turnpike. A uh, little traffic here on 30. Um, anyhow, as I was talking about with the truck, I was just thinking it would be something neat to run around. We could do some stupid stuff with, like take it to the track. What does a 20, 25 year old sport truck run at the track? I don't know, 17? Hey, maybe we'll throw a 100 shot of nitrous on it. I think I have 488 gears for that for a nine and a quarter rear. And we can put 488s on. Just, you know, just do some stuff like that. Interesting stuff. Um, Stuff that would just be mildly amusing, you know. Um, the fact that it's on an automatic, my blue truck, uh, one that I need to fix up at some point, 
Um, the only reason it was ever fun is because it was a stick shift. It was just you could flog it and have a ball. Um, so anyhow, I got up and I was looking at the truck. First off, the guy kind of blew me off for like the first 10 minutes I was there. Like, oh yeah, he'll be right with you. And then he's out there talking on his phone. I was just like, you're trying to make a sale here, buddy. Do you think you'd be a little more attentive? So anyhow, get looking at it and this thing is not as he described. He told me though, just a little bit of rust starting to bubble here and there, nothing bad. Figure it's a two wheel drive sport truck. Makes sense, probably was never driven in winter hardly. Well, it just, that thing was rotted. There was holes in the um, underside of like the one wheel well. The frame actually had a hole in it that I found that had like tape over it and it was spray painted. Um, that's kind of dumb shit we found on the, the, the race truck when we got looking at it on the bed. Um, it wasn't a rust hole, it was just a hole. Um, anyhow, just rust everywhere. All the typical spots for rust, the, the driver's side door looked great from the outside, but once you got on the inside, it was it was screwed up. Um, everything was leaking. Um, scratched up the headliner, had no felt on it. It was just the foam that was left there. Um, there was just a multitude of things that I would never want to get involved in. That truck's not gonna be worth anything. I don't know if the guy thinks it is or what. Um, so finally I got talking to the guy, I said, you know, this thing's not what you told me it was on the phone. You know, you kind of said it's, it was something that was driven and it's not a show truck by any means. It's, which is fine. That's what I was expecting. This thing's just rotted to hell everywhere. When I when I pointed it out to him, we just kind of like, oh, well, we don't really know much about it. Like, buddy, you can see that. That's not not a not a big you know hidden thing. Everybody knows these things rot in these places. So I, I asked him, I said, what's your bottom dollar? Because I know what it's worth to me. And he wouldn't give me an answer. I said, look, I'll give you five hundred dollars for it because nothing on that truck is worth anything. Um, it's worth like scrap, pretty much. It's so I, my thing would be run around, beat it up for a little bit, um, pull the wheels and tires off it and scrap the thing and, you know, maybe take the 5.9 out of it and put it in my blue truck. And he just kind of laughed at me like, the motor's worth that. No, it's not. There is nobody looking for a 5.9 Magnum motor. Well, maybe me eventually, but nobody wants those. You know, if anybody's going to put a motor in something, they're not going to put that, that boat anchor in there. They're going to put an LS in it, something or something like that. Like, Nobody is looking for that engine. It is not worth $500. You can probably find them for like $200 on Craigslist all day long, I'm sure. Um, but needless to say, I'm very irritated. Um, the guy knew where I was coming from. He knew it was like two hours away. So that's four hours of my time, um, plus the diesel, um, just to kind of go look at something. Just kind of to go look at something I feel I was lied to about. Uh, it, it's just irritating. Um, it makes me feel a lot better. Or, I guess reinsures the fact that I did the right thing when I sold the uh, 2011, making sure that that guy knew everything that was going on with the truck. Um, so if you guys are selling anything, just know that, like, just make sure you, you're honest. You know, list everything on there, it'll make the sales process a whole lot better. That, when somebody comes to buy something, they can't pick it apart because guess what? They know what you know. and. There's, there's no hidden stuff like, ah, oh, well, the fender's rotten. Well, yeah, I told you that. You knew that when you showed up. So just don't waste other people's time, and hopefully you don't have to experience shit like this um, in the future because it, it just really is annoying. If the guy would have been honest and, like, his pictures were a bit fuzzy, almost looked like you're taken from a smartphone, or not a smartphone, like a, a flip phone or some shit, which is suspect to begin with, um, just... It's just irritating, and I don't really know what to say else about it. Just don't do it to other people. It sucks. Um, just wasted kind of my whole evening here. So I'm going to finish getting home. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you guys take something from it. Um, I really wish we could have found, you know, that truck would have been fun. We could have done some just really cheap, stupid stuff to it and had a blast with it. And, and you know, just cheap fun. But, uh... Unfortunately, that's not going to happen. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrenching on your truck.
Also, I want to say one thing. If the camera's kind of been bouncing around the whole time I've been talking to you, I got this new camera. Um, it's a little bigger than the old one. It doesn't have a screen that flips up. Well, the old one's a GoPro. They're just easy to hold. Um, so I'm still learning how to get this all right. Um, and doing this while driving's a pain, and my arm is killing me right now. So anyway, guys, I'll talk to you later.